build a magic eight ball simulator. Before looking at this tutorial, it's strongly recommended that you review the tutorial on the shake activity that was presented earlier. We're going to start by creating a new project. And we're going to name that project eight, Magic 8 Ball. And we're going to leave all this stuff alone. Okay, here we are with a fresh new activity. And what we're going to do is we're going to start off by building a helper class that's going to contain all the code for our Magic 8 Ball object. So I'm going to say File, New, Java class, and I'm going to say Magic 8 Ball. And that's now sitting right alongside my 8-ball activity class. And in here, we're going to make our 8-ball the class that's going to respond to the shaking event. So I'm going to put in here that this thing implements sensor event listener. And now I'm going to put in the necessary methods for sensor event listener. And we're not going to use this one. When the device is being shaken and the accelerometer is triggered, we're going to call this method. Now let's go ahead and create some state variables. First, we're going to need some state variables associated with the sensor. Okay, so now uh, we have the variables for the sensor manager and for the accelerometer that we're going to use to detect the shake. And we're going to also need some variables uh, relating to time because we need to make sure that we don't fire the sensor updates uh, too frequently. And we also are going to need to keep track of our position. So these first three are going to tell us our current position, and these last three are going to tell us our previous position. And by subtracting these and taking the absolute value, we'll be able to change how quickly our position is changing. And we're also going to need a couple of static constants that are going to be tuned for our particular device for this shake detection. I'm going to be working with a Galaxy S5, uh, but you might find that you need to tune these two constants to work better with your tablet or phone. Okay, so we have our variables uh, and constants set up for that. And now we also need something to hold our predictions. Okay, I've got uh, four predictions, and we can add some more later if we need to. But that should be good for starters. One other state variable that we're going to need is the context. And we're going to need that in order to display toast messages, which is the mechanism that we're going to use to display the messages from the predictions. And now we're going to need to build a constructor. And I'm going to do that using the automated code generation facility. And here, the only thing we need to pass to the constructor is the context. And there's our constructor right there. And now we're going to initialize the other 
state variables in this constructor. Now we have initialized all the variables related to the accelerometer and the sensor management system. We're now going to initialize all the variables related to our time sampling. We're just going to initialize all the time variables and position variables to a nice safe value of zero just to get started. And that should pretty much do it in terms of initializing variables in the constructor. The next piece of code that we need to put in is for this onSensor change method. Here we need to code the algorithm for detecting when the shake is being experienced by the device. And what we're going to do for this method is we're going to copy the code that we saw from the shake event tutorial that we had before. And I'm not going to say too much about it, but if this is something you haven't seen already, then you need to go back and review that sensor shake tutorial. I've cut and pasted the code from that previous shake tutorial into this method. Now previously in our, our shake tutorial we had simply put up a toast message saying that a shake was being detected. In this project what we're going to do instead is we're going to make a prediction and that's a method we have yet to write. So let's go ahead and create that method now. I'm moving that method because I want to keep the required methods for the sensor event listener together. What we're going to do in this method is we're going to take one of the predictions in our list and randomly select it and display it using the toast feature. this method I've created a random number generator. I've gotten a random number from it that's going to be between 0 and the size of the array of predictions and I'm going to use that index to fetch one of the predictions randomly and I'm going to show that prediction on the main screen using the toast facility. Now we only have a small part left to do. We're going to go back to the main activity class and in here we're going to create a magic eight ball and then we can test the app. We just have to do the layout now for our app and it's going to be relatively simple since the image is not going to be changing. We could go to the App Inventor 2 media drawer for the Magic 8 Ball project and grab the image from there, but I'm going to show you another way. If we go over to Google and search for Magic 8 Ball, then under search tools if we say labeled for reuse, we can get all the pictures that we have an explicit uh, right to reuse in our app and I'm going to just save this one to my computer. And then I'm going to go through the process of loading this into my app. So I'm going to go to the MIP map library. I'm going to say new image asset. And then I'm going to go and choose image. And I'm going to just replace the IC launcher here with the Magic 8 Ball to make it easy. And then I'm just going to navigate to where the 8 Ball is. And then after loading the image, I'm just going to come over here and I'm going to install this image inside an image view widget that I have grabbed from here and dragged onto my layout screen. And I've set the property, the source properties, to be the Im image that I have grabbed from uh, Google. And I've done this here in the layout screen instead of in the code because there's no need to do it in the code since the image is never going to be changing. 
And the other thing that I've done is I've set the alignment uh, to fill the parent uh, so that it can uh, be centered and be fairly large. And uh, now we are ready to uh, compile and run the app. Of course, we can't use this, the emulator for this since we need to shake the device. So we're going to have to create an APK file, uh, download it to, into the phone, and then take a video of our uh, phone screen and show that the app is actually working. So here is the app running on my phone screen. I'm going to shake the, the phone now. And we see that the prediction shows up at, right at the bottom of the screen. I have noticed sometimes when I shake it, more than one prediction shows up. So that's something we may have to fix in our enhancements. Mm -hmm.